Abdullah ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased by both of them, Abdullah and his father Umar, he said, Kuntu ma'a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I was with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and a man from Al Ansar, from the people who used to live in Medina, he came and asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a question. He said, Ya Rasulullah, ayyul mu'minin afdal, who is the best of believers? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Afdul mu'minin imana ahsanuhum khuluqa, the best believer, the best one in this crowd right here, who is it? Is the one who has the best of character, best of akhlaq. Then he, the Sahabi, the companion, asked Rasulullah sallam the question, Who is the wisest, most intelligent, most intellectual, the smartest of believers? He said, They're the ones who remember death the most and they're the ones who are best prepared for what comes after it. These are the most intelligent, the wisest of people. May Allah make you all amongst them. So what's the two traits again? They're the ones who remember death the most and they're the ones who are best prepared for that which comes what? after that. Rasulullah says an authentic narration, Yes, your actions are judged based on your intentions. But in this hadith, the Prophet saying, but what also matters very much is how does your life come to an end? It's all about the ending. So when we think of death and you appreciate that, it's like an antivirus that you have, for example, in your computer, in your phone. And that's what death serves like. If you download a suspicious email, that laptop, that software will pop up, says, beware. Are you sure you want to download this? this this may destroy your laptop. When you think of death, it's that software. You're about to do something that is wrong, something that is haram. And then that death software pops up. Are you sure you want to do this? This may be the last thing you will do before you die. So this is how it works. And also in a good way as well. Death motivates you not to stay away from the haram, but it motivates you to do that which is good, correct? You know, life is short. Khalas, bismillah, all going to be accounted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me do these few deeds. Wallahi, maybe that's the deed that will get me to Jannah. Yes or no? So that's how death works on both angles. May Allah make you and I remember death often in a wise way, the way the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has taught us. Look what he said as well. And he used to speak about death often, yes or no? A lot. He, one hadith he says, repeatedly, frequently remember death, the destroyer of pleasures. Remember that often. Then he says two things about it. He says, whenever you remember death, when things are very hard on you, pressure, hardship, difficulty, and you remember death, the Prophet ﷺ said, death will, reminder will bring you ease. Allahu Akbar, yes or no? Because no matter how painful it is, it will soon come to an end, inshaAllah. And I pray to Allah that whatever comes next is not worse than it. And he said, never do you live moments of ease and pleasure and luxury, except that you should remember death. Why? Because it will tighten things up for you. Allahu Akbar. It makes you look at things with the right perspective. Are you guys with me? You get that promotion, you get that salary, you get that scholarship, you get that marriage, you get that child. You have to realize that it will all, all come to an end. Whether it was ease or hardship, it's all about remembering death. One time, Al-Bara ibn Azib, a wonderful Sahabi, he said, we were with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We were with him and all of a sudden, we saw a group of people on the side gathered. So the Prophet says, Why are these people gathered? Then the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, these other people there are gathered. They're digging a grave. So Al-Bara says, the moment we said that to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left us immediately and he rushed. They didn't walk, they didn't jog. He ran to that other group that was, what, do, what were they doing? Digging the grave. So Al-Bara says in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he fell on his knees right in front of the grave and he was just looking at it, staring at it. And Bara said, and I came and I was looking at him and he was crying and crying until the actual sand under the Prophet was wet. Like how much do you have to cry to make the ground wet? But that's how much he cried. Then when that moment ended, he looked at the Sahaba. He said, Ya Ikhwani, brothers, Ya Ikhwani, لمثل هذا اليوم فأعدو. لمثل هذا فأعدو. For that, be prepared. For that, be prepared. For that, be prepared. So are we prepared? So one time I went to a masjid and they have like a youth room, like a computers, laptops, PlayStation, etc. So then I saw, it was one brother by himself and he was looking at something he's not supposed to look at, something haram basically. And it was not like extremely, extremely haram what I'm referring to. It was actually some like uh, social media, but the pictures of the opposite gender, not really dressed modestly at all. And I, from what I know, and Allah knows best, I don't praise on Allah's behalf, I felt that brother has khayr in him, and Allah knows best. So I came so slowly behind his back, slowly, slowly, slowly. Then I hugged him from the back, and I said, if I was the angel of death, are you ready to go? The brother said, la wallahi, I'm not ready. Wallahi, I'm not ready. No way. Allah knows best and may Allah protect him. This brother now is actually someone 
who I won't obviously mention the name, but a man into the da'wah and so on. Maybe it was that moment of his sincerity and his truthfulness with Allah that I really did not want to die in that situation. So Rasulullah you know, was saying this hadith about death. It's all about the ending. It's all about the ending. I'll share with you one more just to emphasize that point because I wanted to keep it in your mind, inshallah, that software to install it firmly. Rasulullah says a person will be doing the deeds of the people of Jannah. The deeds of who? People of Jannah. Until between them and death is an arm length. Khalas, death is about to come, it's almost over. But right before they die, right before they die, they do the deeds of the people of who? Hellfire. So the Prophet ﷺ, with no hesitation, he says, then that person enters hell. All these years, remember, it's all about the ending. Perhaps another hadith tells you that they were not sincere throughout their lives. The other part of the hadith, Rasulullah says, and a man will be doing a deeds of the people of hellfire. Sin after sin, sin after sin, major after major, Allah knows best what exactly they did until between them and death. Death is right here. They're about to approach death. Between them and death is an arm length, but then they end up doing the deeds of the people of Jannah. And where do they go? Jannah. You know, there's this brother in which he rushed into an Islamic center in Brooklyn, New York. And all of a sudden he said, I want to become a Muslim. I want to become a Muslim. I want to become a Muslim. They said, what's your story? He said, don't ask me questions. Just tell me how to accept Islam. What's the procedure? So they said, go take a shower. So he went, took a shower, came back. What next? Say shahad. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. Okay, how do I pray? That's how you pray and start praying. Allahu Akbar. First day, prayed all five daily prayers. Second day, prayed all five daily prayers. Third day, after Maghrib Salah, a brother who's been a Muslim for a long time sees that new Muslim and he looks at him and he says, Tell me your story, I beg you, because the way you pray, the passion you seem to have, you are crying, you're so into it. Allah knows best, but I'm just, I feel so humbled by your presence. And you, Muslim, for a few days, you're at that level, and I've been a Muslim for all my life, I don't experience that. So what's your story? So he said, throughout my life, I wasn't really a Muslim, learning about religions, all sorts, whether Christianity, Judaism, Islam, etc. And then I knew for a fact that there is a creator, but I didn't know what system, what religion to follow. So I searched and I searched. I went by a library and I read some books about Islam and there's one thing that really got me is how Allah subhanahu wa says in the Quran لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا they have disbelieved those who say Allah is one of three and in another verse لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا they have disbelieved those who say that Allah has a child may Allah protect us right so he said that's exactly how I feel it makes no sense there's one creator he's the one and only that has no children no parents no partners no associates this is perfectly it he said on that night I still like didn't say Islam is the truth but it made a lot of sense to me so on that night I cried and I cried and I cried and I cried prayed to Allah guide me to the truth whatever it is just show me the truth he said I slept brother in my dream I saw Isa alayhi salam Jesus he looked at me and he says follow Muhammad follow Muhammad follow Muhammad then he said then I woke up and then I rushed to the masjid and that's why if you remember when I rushed to the masjid I don't want to ask questions tell me how to become a Muslim move on so this is what the Prophet teaches you and I he says in an authentic narration sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says don't be too impressed by someone's action until you see how their life comes to an end Allahu Akbar let's move on let's move on with the story so he said I had this dream follow Muhammad I came back to the center and that's how I accepted Islam he's like Allahu Akbar beautiful now what salah was that he just finished Maghrib and then for Isha comes the Imam Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And the brother, new Muslim, with a group of people in the congregation, first row. The brother swears by Allah, the one next to him, he says, we went then to the first sajda, first prostration. And then the Imam says, Allahu Akbar, to sit from that sajda. But the brother's still doing prostration. Then we went back to the second sajda. And the brother's still in the first one. We went to the second raka'ah. The brother is the first sajda. Third raka'ah. Fourth raka'ah. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. That brother is where? First sajda in the first which rak'ah? First rak'ah. So the Imam and the brothers, they thought he's very exhausted, he's sleeping. So the Imam called him, brother so and so, brother so and so, no response. So he asked the one next to him, you know what, just, you know, not jim a little bit. So when he moved him, he fell and he was pronounced dead right then and there. And Allah knows best his sincerity, Allah knows best, but these endings are not given to anybody. <laughs> There's another one, there's a ship that left Egypt, like a cruise, it's called Salem Express. And the brother who was on the ship tells us a story. He says the ship went through some issues and it was sinking. And then the husband, he went to the cabin, ran and he saw his wife. He's like, leave everything and run for your life. The ship is sinking. He says, come, leave, leave. She says, okay, 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 wait, 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 let me put on my hijab. He's like, are you crazy? Just go for your life. The ship is sinking. And Islamically, she can leave, right, for her life, correct? But she said, no, 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 I need to wear the hijab. He's like, are you crazy? The ship is sinking. I'm not exaggerating. It's, 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 it's over. She said, Wallahi, Wallahi, I, I would never want to die, never want to die except an act of obedience. 
She said, you go, I'll catch up with you. And he actually left her, subhanAllah. The brother said, I actually left her. So the brother left and she put on her hijab and everything. Then she went to the upper deck and she saw it's pretty much it. It's over. This is it. People are drowning. People are yelling. The uh, safety boats or whatever you're going to call them, pretty much all of them are gone. So she looks at her husband and she says, are you pleased with me? He's like, what kind of question is this? What time are you asking? Am I pleased with you? He's like, what kind of question is that? She's like, just answer me. Are you pleased by me? He's like, you're a great wife. And of course, I'm pleased with you. What an honorable wife you've always been. She said, Alhamdulillah. And then she said, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. And Ashhadu anna Muhammad al Rasulullah. The brother says the story himself. He's like, Ya Shaykh, Wallahi al Azim. I have never seen my wife after that moment. She drowned. An ending doesn't give it to anybody. It's all about the ending. It's all about the ending. Allah knows her past, but it's all about the ending. May Allah grant us a beautiful life and beautiful death. And you have another one in which also a brother living in an apartment building, student of knowledge. You have that sometimes where you, your apartment or your house is very practicing, but your neighbor is completely not, right? May Allah guide us all. Amir Alameen. So that's how his situation. He said, I used to have this neighbor, uh, upper level. We have the balcony, whatever he plays the music and stuff like that, I can hear it. It gets really irritating. I spoke to him about Islam, Muslim family, and gave him da'wah, nothing. No action whatsoever. Salah doesn't pray. Abaddon, very bad. So I tried my best until one day I was in my apartment. I heard a lot of crying and yelling in the upper apartment. So I rushed to go up, knocked on the door and I said, Khair, everything is well. Like the doctor just came over and told us that our father, the father figure who had had the issue with the da'wah, he was on his deathbed and this may be his last day and Allah knows best. It's a matter of moments, asked us to perhaps bring family over to give him a farewell. So the brother, he says, Ya Shaykh, Wallahi, not to me, the Shaykh he's referring the story to. Ya Shaykh, Wallahi, when I I was there I was so angry why were you angry because you're playing his favorite song and song of words that none of us will have a difference of opinion on so basically he was playing some songs of you know some language that's not appropriate so he told his children he's like your father you just told me he's on his deathbed is about to die and you're playing his favorite song that sort about love and things of that sort he's like what do you suggest and they play some Quran for him or something anything so he's like oh, we don't have any access to Quran obviously you can tell it was a little bit back in the day there's only tapes so he went back to his apartment, grabbed a tape or CD or so, then went back to the apartment and played the Quran. The brother swears by Allah. You know the agonies of death, you go unconscious, then you go conscious, like back and forth, yes or no? So he said when I, this whole discussion was happening, the father was unconscious. He swears by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the moment he played the Quran at the room where the father was on his deathbed, the father regained his consciousness. The Sakarat al he gained back his consciousness. And when the Quran was played, the father said, turn this thing off. Turn this thing off. I don't want to hear these words. I don't want to hear these words. Put back the music. Put back the music. This is what brings sooth soothness and serenity to my heart. The brother swears by Allah, these were the last things he said and he died. May Allah protect us. We don't judge that he's going to hell or to Jannah. Allah knows best. But it's not an ending that anyone would wish for. May Allah protect us and grant us a beautiful ending. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I used to forbid you from visiting graves. But now I tell you and I advise you, go visit graves. Why, Ya Rasulullah? In one hadith he says, because it softens the heart. And wallahi, it does. May Allah grant us a heart that can be softened. And it brings tears to the eyes. It gives perspective of this life. So go visit the graveyards. I want to add one thing to that. Go beyond janazas. No, just go there when you're the only one in the graveyard. And go to the Muslim graveyard and say, Assalamu alaikum. And you say the dua, etc. And you go see. One time I visited the grave and wallahi, the thing that got me the most was the one who was born the same year I was born in. And I see like 19, such and such date. All right. Okay, then I saw the death was 2017. I'm like, you never know. You never know. I might be the one. SubhanAllah, then you're like, you need to work harder. I need to be, you know, giving to my family and to the community and so on. So visit the grave. May Allah grant you all a beautiful ending to your life.